great boys. It's 4 a.m. on a Sunday morning. I'm on the way to the gym. I woke up pretty early, didn't know what else to do. This guy's turning. I'm on a pretty busy road, bro. Even though it's kind of empty, because it's 4 in the morning on a Sunday. But staring into my phone probably isn't a good idea. But I thought whilst I'm walking, because there's no buses at this time, I don't have a bike or a car. So I'm walking, it's like 20 minutes. So I might as well record a little video. It's freezing, by the way. But yeah, I just wanted to talk about what happened to the men, bro. There's no men around anymore. And I'm going to give a few examples of why I've come to this conclusion. Because there just isn't any men about anymore. We have boys in men's bodies. I need to fix it, bro. I'm in a group chat with like 20, 30 guys. All in self-improvement around the Manchester area. And I sent them a few voice notes the other day. Just talking about what I had experienced twice in the past week. And what I had experienced is two instances. That's two. Where men were basically harassing women. And I'm not a feminist. I'm really not. Okay? I'm not no women's rights activist. I'm actually probably the opposite to a feminist. But that's the topic for a different day. But what I do think is that men, we should protect women, not assault them. And obviously I don't know the context of the first instance, which I'm gonna tell you about. So the first time, this was on a Friday night, I was just walking to church, cause I have like a youth night there. And uh, I seen a man and a woman, the woman was like backed into a fence and she was screaming, trying to get away, bro. And he, he was not letting her get away. So I walk over to them. I said, what's going on, man? What's going on? And then the guy gets in my face. He goes, F off, man. This is my girlfriend, not your girlfriend. And he gets in my face, proper trying to start something. I said, bro, chill. Don't touch me. And, bro, he kept coming at me. I was like, bro, what are you doing? You better not be hurting him. And then he just walked away, bro. And then I thought, oh, whatever, bro. This guy's a retard. <laughs> but I didn't hear anything from then. And, like, literally two minutes later, whilst I was already down the road, I heard more screaming. So I had to call the police just in case, bro. I'm no snitch, right? But I knew that no other man was gonna do anything about that. So I did the only thing I knew how to do. 999 in the phone. I don't know if they ever followed up on it. I hope they did, because that woman looked pretty innocent to me, bro. She was crying, screaming, everything, trying to get away. And of course, I don't know the context. I really don't. So I can't sit here and judge that guy. But the same thing happened literally a week later. I think this was on, I wanna say on Monday. So we had the Friday, then we had a whole other week. And then there was a new week and it was on Monday. I think it happened then. And uh, I came out of the gym. I just went to the shop to get some, I think my mum wanted milk or something, right? And potatoes. So I was carrying my potatoes just out of the shop, walking to my bus stop. You know, I had my, my jacket off, I had my thick arms out, bro. And I uh, carried my potatoes, looking like a G, right? And uh, there was like five, six kids on a bike. It was probably four, actually. But around that number, they were like 13, 14 years old. And in front of me, there was a girl who goes to my gym. She had her headphones in. She wasn't really wearing any, uh, she wasn't covering herself, let's say. She's wearing pretty revealing clothing. And I'm not saying it's her fault, I'm really not. It's their fault. These boys, she had her headphones in, so I don't even know if she heard them. But they were proper trying to talk to her, like in a disrespectful way. And uh, bro, I stared them down. I was like, bro, if you boys do anything, it's over for you, right? Uh, but they didn't do anything. I thought that was the that was over. But they were on their bikes. I mean, this girl were walking the same way. I was like a few feet behind her, just because we were going the same way. And uh, I noticed that the boys on the bikes, they were slowly trailing behind us. So I turn around, I look at them, I stare them on the eye, and they stop. So then I turn around and I carry on again. And then uh, there's like a little road where I have to cross, but she doesn't cross. So they wait, and they wait for me to cross, it looks like, on their bikes. They're just standing there waiting for me to cross. I didn't know if they were doing anything wrong though. I was like, what are these boys just standing there for? And uh, it became pretty apparent once I had crossed the road because they 
started going the same direction as the school. And they didn't do anything at first because they knew I was still watching them because I could see them across the road. So I could see them and they were looking at me. So I just stood at my bus stop, like the road's pretty big. Like imagine that, that road, like twice the size. And there's like an other bus stop over the, the road. And there's like more road where she keeps on walking. And um, yeah, like this girl carries on walking on the opposite road as me. And the boys on the backs, they like drive past it and they wait at the top of the road, which is like just outside my, what do you call it? I said my visual range, I don't know what the word is, but I couldn't see past that point where they were standing. So I was thinking, are these boys waiting for something or are they waiting for her? So I did not know, but I kept on watching them because I could barely see them. And they waited until she got there. And then as she, she had to get on the road to try and walk past them. But they were like turning their heads. They were like turning their heads. And all that they were trying to talk to. But I had no idea what was going on, bro. But it didn't look very good. Okay? I could be... My imagination could be going, but I'm 99% sure they, them boys were trying something. So I got on my bus. And then the bus like went past them boys. I just seen them all standing around like some residential area i didn't see her so she's probably okay i hope anyway and it was like the middle of the day but yeah like these boys even if they didn't do anything they were clearly trying to like make this woman feel uncomfortable bro and i'm not i'm not a feminist again i have to say that but i even spoke to the boys about this and they were saying their own experiences too like they've experienced it where men are constantly just picking on women bro and Although this girl was wearing pretty revealing clothing, it's not her fault. It's really not. So <laughs> she should wear uh, more covering clothes. But a lot of guys, they were like, oh, it's her fault. Why is she wearing that clothes? Bro, come on, that's just cope. What we need is men, okay? We need real men, not boys. You can't control their urges. We're not in the caveman times, bro. We don't just chase women around and impregnate them, okay? <laughs> that's not what we do anymore. We're civilized people. So, what I'm saying is, bro, the first time I had to interfere, how many men would have interfered? I don't think many would. And that's what worries me. Because how long is it until your sister, or your mum, or your daughter, or your cousin is out all alone, and somebody tries this with her, and you're not around to help her? You would want the men around her to help her, would you not? So, what we need, listen, me a few, year, a few years ago, I would not have done that. I was scared when I did it, I was scared. But I knew what the right thing to do was. I was still scared, okay? But the point of being a real man is being scared and doing it anyway. When you know the right thing to do, you do it anyway. So what we need is real men who aren't afraid to go out of their comfort zone every now and again to do the right thing. So what happened to that man, bro? This, I think this is a result of a lack of father figures, good father figures, bro. Because the closest thing I had to a father figure was my granddad. And he's passed away now, God rest his soul. But he was the closest thing I ever had to a father figure. I hardly ever seen him either, so I was pretty much just raised by women my whole life. And only for the past few years, once I discovered self-improvement, was I able to like flip the switch. Um, and that's the reason why I actually did that. And I was talking to the boys about it. They were angry. As, they were just as angry as me, bro. Like, this is a thing that's more common than you might think. Because you're a man. You can go outside at four in the morning. You don't care. You can just hold your phone up like this, record a video. You don't care. Because it's already starts on you. They, bro, they know they're at risk of getting into a confrontation. And most men are afraid of confrontation. Even though they might act big and hard, they're not, bro. So most people aren't going to start on you if you're a man who looks like he can handle himself which hey i don't think i look like prey but hey you might think differently uh but listen we're men we don't have to worry about these things so the point of this video is it is your responsibility it's my responsibility to become the men that we wish we had as fathers and that all the other men around have as fathers because what's going to happen if we have sons and we can't we can't teach them what the right thing to do is. We can't teach them to do the right thing. 
Even if they know what the right thing to do is, they won't do it. Because they never had a strong father figure. They don't know who to look up to. They don't know what the right thing to do is. They might think, oh, I should probably go do something. But nah, it's not my responsibility. You're a man, it is your responsibility. But that's just my opinion. I hope you all agree. But what I'm saying is it's not just for ourselves why we do this. We don't just do self-improvement for our own good. We do self-improvement for the good of society. Because the West is falling, bro. Like, you should see these streets around me. I'm, I'm pretty much walking around the most dangerous parts in Manchester. Some of them, not the most. But it's pretty rough around here. And that's not even saying much. Because most places in Manchester are, like, dangerous, bro. But, like, I'm a man. Okay? Of course, it's a little bit, you know, dodgy. But it's fine. But listen, man. I forgot what I was even saying there, bro. But yeah, listen, I was just saying, it is our responsibility to change it. Oh, I remember what I said. Wait, sorry. <laughs> so basically, I'm in a rundown area, bro. The world is falling. The West is falling. This is not just Manchester, okay? The entire West is falling. I'm telling you, you've heard this a million times, bro. By all the, <laughs> the, 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 the influences, the millionaire influences, like Andrew Tate, Iman Gadji, whatever, bro. You've heard this a million times, but it's true. It really is true. Like, I only enjoy the UK when I get out of the city, bro. <laughs> if you're in cities and you try to make friends, you're gonna have a much harder time than if you're not in a city, because people are much friendlier, bro. And you have less risk of being stabbed. That's just the truth of it. But the reason is, we have a lack of strong men. So the world just ended up like this, because everybody's looking out for themselves, not for each other. And that's what traditional masculinity is all about. Looking out for your tribe, your people. So it is our responsibility because we are the 1%. We are the 1% of people who actually want to change ourselves for our families, for our own good, right? And how hard is it for 1% of people to influence the world, bro? I'm not talking about the 1% richest. We're like at the bottom of the world, bro. is do you want a tram trap bro that's not important okay we are the one percent not by riches but by wisdom and it's our responsibility to change the world yeah bro just wanted to give you something to chew on a little bit of morning 4am content bro I'll try to get a few more videos out this week if not then sorry about it but yeah man like and subscribe, lads, if you want to hear more of me rambling about rubbish. Thanks for watching, lads. Bye.